Hi, Sawaiwa. It's me. It's your Aunt M. I'm going to read you some more of the book, A Bear Called Panitin, okay? But first, but first we're going to listen to one minute of music. Here we go. Okay, that's it for the music. That's it for the music, so I went. Now I'm going to read you the story. We're up to chapter 7. Chapter 7. 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. Three, four, five, six, seven, seven. Okay, chapter seven. Chapter seven is called Adventure at the Seaside. One morning, Mr. Ground Cap stopped. The ball o meter in the hall. It it looks as if it it's going to be a a nice day, he said. How about a trip to the sea? His remark was greeted with with enthusiasm by by the rest of the family, and in no time at all the the house was in an uproar. Miss Bird started to cut, to cut a, a huge pile of sandwiches. While Mr. Brown got the, the car ready, Jonathan and Judy searched for them, the bathing suits, and Paniton went up to his room to pack. And an outing with, which involved Paniton was, what, An outing which involved Paniton was always rather a a a business as he insisted on on taking all his things with him. As time went by he he had acquired lots of things as well as his suitcase. He now had a a small weekend weekend grip with the with the initials BP inscribed on the side and and a paper carrier bag for the odds and ends. For the the summer months Miss Brown had had bought him a a sun hat. It was made of straw and and very floppy. Paniton liked it for for by turning the the brim up or or down he he could make it different shapes and it and it was really like like, like having several hats in ones in one when we when we get to to bright seas said miss brown we will buy you a bucket and spade then you then you can can make a sand castle, and you can go on the the pier," said said Jonathan eagerly. "They have some some super machines on the pier. You better bring bring plenty of pennies, and we can go 
Goes swimming, added Judy. You can. Can swim, can't you? Not, not very well, I'm afraid, replied Paniton. You see, I have, I have, I have never been to the, the seaside before. Never been to the, the seaside? Everyone stopped what they were, were doing and stared at Paniton. Never, said Paniton. They all agreed that it it must be nice to be, to be going to the, the seaside for the, the first time in one's life. Even Miss Bird began, began talking about the, the time she, she first went to, to Bright Sea many years before. Penitent became very excited as, as they told him all, all about the, the wonderful things he, he was going to see. The, the car was crowded when they, they started off. Miss Bird, Judy, and Jonathan, and Jonathan sat in the back. Mr. Brown drove, and Miss Brown and, and Paddington sat beside him. Paddington liked sitting in the, the front, especially when the, the window was open, so that he, he could poke his, his head out in the, the cool breeze. After a minor delay when Paddington's hat blew off on, on the outskirts of, of London, they were soon on the, the open road. Can you smell the, the sea yet, Paniton asked Miss Brown after a while. Paniton poked his, his head out and sniffed. I can smell something, he said. Well said, Mr. Brown. Keep on sniffing because we are almost there. And, and so sure enough, as they reached the top of a hill and and rounded a a corner to to go down the the other side. There it was in the the distance, blistering in the the morning sun. Paddington's eyes open wide. Look at all the 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 boats on the on the dirt. He cried, pointing in in the direction of the, the beach with his paw. With his paw. Everyone laughed. That's not dirt, said Judy. That's sand. By the time they, they had, they had explained all about, about sand too. To Paniton, they were in, in bright sea itself and and driving along the front. Paddington looked at the 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 sea rather doubtfully. The the waves were were mu much bigger than he he had imagined. Not so big as the the ones he'd seen on his his journey to England but but quite large enough for a, a small bear. Mr. Brown stopped the, the car by a shop on the, on the E-S-P-L-A-N-A-B and took out some money. Some money. I'd like to fit this, this bear out for it. For a day at the seaside, he said to the, the lady behind the counter. Let's see now, we shall need a bucket and spade, a pair of, of sunglasses, one of those rubber tires, as, as he wheeled off the, the list, the, the lady handed the articles to, to Paniton, who, 
began to wish he he had more than two paws. He had a a wobble tire around his middle, which which kept sliding down around his knees. A pair of of sunglasses balanced precautiously on his nose. His straw had a bucket and and spade in one hand and his suitcase in the other. Photographs saw Hamilton turn to see an an untidy man with a a camera looking at him. Only a swelling saw results guaranteed. Money back if you you are not satisfied. Hamilton considered the the matter for a moment. He didn't like like the look of the the man very much, but he had he had been but he had been saving hard for for several weeks and now had had just over three shillings. It would be nice to 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 have a picture of himself. Won't take a minute, said the, the man, disappearing behind a, a black cloth at the back of the, of the camera. Just watch the body. Pennington looked around. There was no board in, in, inside as far as he could see. He went round behind the man and tapped him. The, the photographer who appeared to, to, to be looking for, for something jumped and then emerged from under his cloth. How do you, how do you expect me to take your picture if you, if you don't stand in, in front? He asked in, in an, in, in an A G G R E B E D voice. That's all for now, so I will read you some more next time. Now we're going to listen to one minute of music. Okay, that's it for now, so I will I'll read, read you some more of the book later on. Okay, bye-bye for now. Lots of love and kisses. Mwah, mwah, mwah.